PHD Virtual Backup and Replication version 6.5 introduces Backup Archiving, which lets you create archived copies of your existing backup files. Backup Archive provides an easy way to copy backup data off-site, to the cloud, to removable disk devices, or to any supported storage target. You can select individual backups to archive, archive an entire backup data store, or even archive multiple data stores into a single location. When archiving multiple data stores to one location, the archive target universally deduplicates data across all backup data stores. And since the archive backups are just copies of your original backup files, the archive backups can be used for all forms of recovery, including instant, rollback, file, application items, and with VM replication. In this video, we'll take a look at the different options available for creating those archive copies of your backups. To begin, you'll need to designate a PHD VBA as the archive target. This will be the appliance that performs the actual archive copying and stores the copies on its configured backup data store. I've deployed a new PHD VBA and added an NFS share as its storage target. This will be the location where I'll be storing all archive copies. This target can be any of the supported backup storage types, including attached disks, SIFs, NFS, or if you have CloudHook enabled, any of the available cloud storage options. After configuring the appliance's storage, I'll click the Disaster Recovery tab. Here I'll add all the existing backup data stores I'll be using as my source. All data stores added here will be available for both creating archived backup copies and also for creating replica VMs. I'll click Discover and add the attached disk data store of my existing VBA. This contains all of the backups I'd like to archive. Next I'll click Enable Backup Archive. Selecting this option does two things. It enables the current VBA's backup data store to be used as an archive target, and it disables the ability to create backups using this VBA. Best practices recommend that the VBA you use as an archive target be used specifically for that purpose. Next I'll select the archive mode to use. Backup Archives will allow me to select individual existing backups for archive by applying the archive flag in the backup catalog. Also, I can turn on the archive flag using the backup wizard. In that case, all backups created will be automatically archived. Once a backup is archived in this mode, the archive flag is removed. The second mode available is Backup Data Store Sync. This lets me create an exact copy of the mounted backup data stores. The data stores are synchronized. Any new backups are automatically added, and any backups removed from the source data store are also removed from the target archive data store. When using Backup Data Store Sync, the retention policy for this VBA is set to keep all and disabled. Retention for synchronized backup data stores takes place at the source. The synchronized version reflects all changes. By adding multiple data stores here, I could create a single consolidated archive of all of my backups. And again, the archive target supports global deduplication across all of the source backup data stores. For this demo, I'll select Backup Archive and save my changes. I'm going to select a few backups to send to my archive target. I'll head over to the Backup Catalog and expand my backups list. If I change my view, I can see my source VBA that was added, and its backups, and also my new archive VBA with no backups yet. I'll select a few backups from each of my VMs. Next I'll click Archive. Since I have this VBA's data store mounted as an archive source and backup archiving enabled, all backups with the archive flag will be processed. If I did not have backup archive enabled, the backups would simply be retained indefinitely on the local data store. Now I'll jump over to the Disaster Recovery area and click the Backup Archive Process tab. With my archive VBA selected from the menu, here I can see all of the backups that are currently in progress and queued for archive. To see any updates, I can click Refresh.
If I head back over to the backup catalog and refresh the list, I can see my archived copies begin to show up. I know they're archived copies because they're displayed in blue font with an asterisk at the end of the line. If I change the view again to View by VBA, I can see all of the copies on the archived data store. Using the catalog, I can restore VMs and files directly from this archived location if needed, just like with my original backup files. If I needed to bring the archived backups back to their original local backup storage, I could simply reverse the archive process for the VM backups I wanted to bring back. For more information about backup archiving and other features available with version 6.5, visit the PhD Virtual website at www.phdvirtual.com.